With a building as old as this, you never know what you're going to find. Once used to house animals, this little stone house has had a long history. And now it's time for us to turn it into a home for our family, while we build our forever home here on our farm in Portugal. After digging down and lowering the floor in the kitchen, it's now time to start building back up from top to bottom. With a new wooden extension getting ready for a roof and a new floor that's got us feeling all creative and artsy. This is the fun bit. All right, and well, uh, well, that cement's going into place. I'm going to come up here and carry on with the extension build. The next bit I'm going to do is just put some caps across the top there. Um, that'll be basically two pieces of wood, one going here and then the next going here and then the, uh, the next one overlapping the top of it and that kind of locks everything into place across the top anyway. And then we'll be looking to put a roof on, um, put some roof joists on. Not entirely sure how I'm going to do that just yet because I haven't got any pieces of wood that are long enough individually to span the room. So that's going to be an interesting one. I'm sure I'll work it out though. Blimey, had a bit of a panic then. Oh, I'd lost my guide. These things never seem important, but then when you don't have them, these are super important. Okay, that feels good. I basically just need to cut a few pieces of wood to go around the top, the same width as this. Shouldn't take too long. That's typical, straight out of battery, nightmare. I, I, do you know what? I just think that this piece of kit really isn't anyway designed to be doing too many of those long cuts. I think probably Fred's table saw is, is gonna be a better bet. So um, I might just go and chop a few pieces on Fred's table saw. gone pretty quiet down in the uh in the kitchen of the stone house let's go and have a look what's going on it sounds like they're setting the level there's the level and there we go yeah good work now it's going to be cement 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 in earnest and check that out that's blue sky everybody that's the first time since Tara and the boys left the farm that I've seen any blue sky. I know that they've seen blue sky every blooming day. Lucky them, they'll be back soon. And I can't wait until they get back. Right, where are those step ladders? More lost tools, can't even blame it on Crusoe this time. Got them, they were in the bathroom upstairs that we're chipping all the tiles off the wall from. Of course they were.
Should we go and have a quick peek, see what's going on? There we go, look. It's coming in, isn't it? Love it. I'm not going to say it's the biggest job that we've done on the farm yet, um, because we've done quite a few really big jobs. Um, but that feels like quite a momentous change for the for the farm. It feels like, you know, once it's done, that room down there especially, it could, it could be something really, really beautiful. In fact, this whole area here, hopefully, fingers crossed, is going to be um, a Picasso. Should we say a Picasso? Yeah, I think Picasso is quite good. He painted flowers, didn't he? Or we could say an Emily. Emily, of course, is the lady that painted the image of how this stone house and how the extension would look all put together. Um, she's got an Etsy account, by the way, um, and she paints people's houses for a living. Very, very reasonable prices as well. I think it's around about 100 bucks per picture. So if you want somebody to paint your house for you, Emily's definitely your right girl. Obviously, there was no house for, here for her to paint. So I just said, oh, do it like this. And, and Bob's your uncle. There it was. So yeah, um, I, I'll, I'll link it in the description below. She's great. She really is. <laughs> that's pretty cool i've done the hole at the top i don't know what it's called but it, it's it's basically the piece of wood that holds everything together um it's gone all the way around so the next thing to do is one of two things we can either start looking at the walls and putting up some board on the walls or we can get the roof structure into place and like i said earlier i'm not quite sure what i'm going to do with that roof structure because I don't have pieces of wood that are particularly long enough because I've kind of changed the plan on the ha on how the, the roof is going to look this way. So what have we got? We've got the pagoda sort of going down that way. That looks great. We've got the tiny house also with a roof that kind of goes down that way. Um, and we've also got a very real possibility that in the future this needs to go down, come all come down. But we will want to leave some sort of a structure there to, to sit underneath and have flowers over the top. So I was talking to Tara last night and I said, why don't we, um, why don't we do the roof the same as everything else is? And, and forget about doing an apex. We could do an apex and I'd have the right length wood and, and that would be pretty simple to just stick together. Um, but I think actually for the longevity of the project, if we have a pagoda style roof on the other side and then we use that plastic roof material that looks kind of like tiles and we just screw that down, when it comes to it, ultimately, we'll, all we'll have to do really, probably, is just unscrew a few pieces of wood. We'll keep this as a fence here that we can sit up against and grow pot plants over. Take this wall out here, super simple. Um, and then there you go. You've got a nice pagoda style roof over this side. So I think that's the way I want to go. Uh, I just need to have a good old, um, good old ponder on how to get the wood and what to do with the wood pieces. I need four meters, um, at least four meter lengths. Um, but for now, I do know um, that uh, Carlos um, is starting to get excited in the kitchen down, down there. So let's go and have a look. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier about how the tiles are going to go down on the floor. Um, and actually, as it happens, he's already started. Here we go. So these are just rested there. They're not in place yet, but that's giving a style of what we're, what we're hoping for. Um, and well, I was anticipating that perhaps we would lay a cement floor and then come back another day and, and start putting down the tiles. But um, Carlos is just like, no, let's get on with it, man. So we've wet down these terracotta tiles. They're nice and wet and damp so they don't crack. That's the idea anyway. Everybody knows that I'm not particularly good at tiling. That, that to me, comes under the banner of plumbing and plumbing, yuck. 
tiling not great either. We finished off this uh, off the pattern here that's going to go at the porch. It looks like that, just with a couple of tiles that are missing now. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, and the idea is that we have those hexagonal tiles running across the back of the room just so that when we build a kitchen the tiles will be a hexagonal line of tiles across the front of the of the um of the kitchen cabinets you know so if you imagine you're, you're looking down at the floor kitchen kitchen countertop is here and then underneath the kitchen countertop on the floor you've got a row of hexagonal tiles and then behind that everything is is going back to square until you get to the door and then you've got that pretty pattern that I made a little bit earlier. Anyway, you'll get the hang of it. We'll um, we'll keep an eye on what Carlos is doing and uh, I've got to go and cut a whole bunch of tiles for them so that they've got something to put in that little row there. Um, all right, let's go do that. Okay, so I have spent a lot of time cutting tiles um, this morning. It's starting to look like, well, shall we say a bloodbath out here. Um, lots and lots of tile cutting. And the reason for that is, let me show you. Obviously, we've, we've got that, which will be the mat, the tile mat that goes in the entrance right here. But we are starting to fit tiles in the stone house that's pretty cool isn't it i've also been working on some tiles for up here just to sort of do some edging um square tiles around here and the plan will be to put a mat in front of that sliding door right there just like the one that we've cut down there for the porch area so it should look really pretty and then of course if and when we do have to take down this building as i explained earlier we'll have a pagoda a nice pagoda here there's always going to be a bit of a step up here and we can extend this pattern that we've got here across into that area there. But we're, we're getting way ahead of ourselves there. It's really difficult when you're building something you think is gonna be truly beautiful to imagine having to knock it down. But you know, in the back of my mind, that's what I'm constantly doing. I'm constantly thinking soon, you know, a couple of years from now, we've got to make it versatile enough so that when we do, if we do have to knock it down, um, it's not gonna to be too much of a drama. As those tiles are going down, I'm trying really hard to keep them all as wet as I possibly can. Um, terracotta tiles, when they're being laid with cement, really like to be quite damp so that they don't crack. So super interesting how it's being done here. And um, basically what's happening is there's been a dry cement mix put down on the floor. Well, quite dry, like semi-dry. It's very granular. Um, and as we go along, we're taking the, the brush here and we're just splashing the brush on the ground um, to wet it up a little bit. And that will be enough to cure the tiles into their, into their forever home definitely easier to work with a dry mix you know you, you don't have it running all over the place and oozing out of places where you don't want it to so it's um it's 
smart. That goes so well. Look at that. So on the other side of the pattern, that's where the kitchen's gonna go. And I'm hoping that the kitchen will come down to the pattern so that in front of the kitchen, there's gonna be a nice fancy bit. So, as a general rule, Carlos could probably lay around about 30 square meters worth of tile in a day. Well, today um, a floor has been laid and I don't know, maybe 15 square meters worth of tile. But the issue I think that has been is that each one of these tiles is slightly different size from the next. They're in Portuguese parlance, rustica, which we like. Good morning, everybody. The sun is shining and it's another really exciting day. Who knows where the end of the day will end up. Um, but one thing's for absolute certain, the tiles are flying down. Carlos is in there, he's uh, bashing them down. I've been cutting a, a few more tiles this morning to try and get as much detail and as much interest into the floor tiles as possible. I think it's gonna look great in the end. Um, yesterday, at the end of the day, we took the door frame out. That was a relief. I don't know how many times I've bashed my head on that door frame but it was truly a lot. I've got this, um, I don't know, I, I almost feel attached to it somehow, so I should probably keep it, or maybe I'll post it, um, maybe I'll post it to Felix, who bashed his head more times than anybody else on it. So um, it, it's lovely to see it go, but also there's some kind of, I don't know, nostalgia attached to that particular door frame. Okay, so what's the plan? Okay, and whilst the tiles are going down, my plan is to use the big piece of kit that's come with the tilers, um, with Carlos, to bash away at a stone, at a rock we've got over there in the corner. One that with my own kit would take a really, really long time, but they've got the breaker here. Do, 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 and we can get rid of that rock. It's really important it goes. As you can see there, we've got this situation where the rock comes right up against the wall. And what's gonna happen there is when it rains, water is likely to pool in this area. We definitely don't want that, especially against a wooden structure. So that entire rock over there in the corner has just got to go. Right 
Okay, it's gonna get exciting. I'm actually feeling a little bit nervous about this part of the project because it's me that cut all of those tiles um, into shape and made that design. And I know when I was making that design and cutting them and putting it all down, Carlos was a little bit like, hmm, what's he doing? Um, but, you know, what's so cool about that is you've got two shaped tiles. You've got hexagonal and you've got square. Are they hexagonal or octagonal? Or I have to ask my son. Crusoe would know that because there's a TV show, a cartoon that he watches with hexagon, hexagons and octagons on it. So um, anyway, um, you know, it's pretty pretty cool what, what kind of shapes you can make with just two shapes and what you can create with just two shapes. Hopefully it goes down okay. Moment of truth, I'd say. I'm doing what Tara does to me, which is stand and watch. <laughs> when, I, when I'm trying to do something, I'm concentrating a lot. Tara, or Tara will often come over and stand and watch me concentrate and watch me work. Okay, well, it doesn't matter how diligent and how carefully you put those tiles down, they are all hand cut tiles. They're all a little bit different. So the three of us have literally fiddled with every single tile there to try and get it right. I'm very, very grateful at the moment for um, Carlos and Andreas. Um, patience with putting together something like this. I know that it can be quite frustrating, um, especially when you've got a guy like me going, you know, the, the millimeters really count. Um, so I think between us, we've done really, really well there. Bom, Carlos. Okay. André. Si. Quanta. Quatro e meio. André! Quatro e meio! Quatro e meio! Four and a half!